Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. (laughs) The Kraft Cheese Company will also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night. Present each week at this time, Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But first, if there are cheese lovers in your family, you're probably wondering how to adjust their appetites to your red stamp ration booklet. But that's easily solved when you learn how simple it is to extend such favorites as Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred uses. You see a great many of those hundred uses combine the unique cheddar cheese flavor of Pabstet with other foods for appetite-tingling results. So Pabstet becomes an economical luxury that you can use thriftily and often. Take leftover meats or vegetables or fish. Add a smooth, appetizing cheese sauce made with Pabstet, and you have another delightful main dish for another meal that's wonderfully good to eat and extra nourishing. Yes, besides adding flavor goodness when you melt or toast or slice it, Pabstet helps supply many of the milk nutrients your family needs. Milk protein, milk minerals, food energy, vitamin A, and vitamin G that's also called riboflavin. So remember the name, Pabstet, the delicious golden cheese food that comes in the flat, round package. Pabstet, the nourishing cheese food of a hundred uses. Now on to Summerfield and the Great Gildersleeve. It's spring in Summerfield, lovely, lovely spring. You can feel it in the first warm rays of the sun slanting across the backyard. You can hear it in the excitement of the birds twittering in the maples and the lazy clop-clop of the milkman's horse coming up the street. You can see it everywhere. Spring does something to people, and spring has done something to Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. <laughs> For early in the morning, hours before he's due at the office, even before Bertie is astir in the kitchen, Summerfield's foremost slug of bed is up and dressed and out of doors. He stands now on the back stoop barefoot with a shoe in each hand and dabbles a toe in the dewy grass. <laughs> it's cold. Well, anyway, here goes. <laughs> it tickles. Why, Uncle Morris. Oh, good morning, Marjorie. You startled me. I thought I was alone. What are you doing up so early? Well, it was such a fine morning. And what in the world are you doing with your shoes off? Oh, those. Well, uh, I suppose it's silly, my dear, but I've always had a sneaking desire to go barefoot in the dew. <laughs> you know, so have I. How is it? Cold. Don't try it. I think I'll put my shoes back on before I catch my death. Yes, you better. And, uh, Marjorie. Yes? Uh, you don't have to say anything about this to anybody. You know, people might not understand. Don't worry, Uncle Mort. I understand. My favorite niece. Now, how am I going to get my feet dry? <sighs> Isn't it a glorious morning, Uncle Mort? Yes, it is. It's glorious. I love spring. I love to see things growing. If darn grass gets between your toes. <laughs> it all feels so warm and friendly. Seems somehow as if the whole world were in love. Well, there's one shoe on. What were you saying, my dear? Nothing. Uncle Mort, what's it like being in love? Being in love? Yes. I think I know, but tell me. Well, it's a little like an attack of chills and fever. <laughs> Only nicer. <laughs> Where's my other shoe? Oh, I had it. Marjorie, look. Look there. What? By the hedge there, sticking out of the leaf. <gasps> Why, it's a crocus. Yeah, the first crocus of spring. Look at that little thing peeping up at us down there. Oh, Uncle Mort, now it's really spring. Yeah, isn't that cute? Oh, don't pick it. Why not? But why? It looks so sweet there. I know a place where it's going to look sweeter. Oh, Uncle Mort. Uh, there you are, little crocus. I know somebody you're going to make a big hit with. Well, you better put it in water right away, Uncle Mort. They don't last long when you pick them. Then I'll run over there with it right now. But Uncle Mort, do you think Mrs. Ransom would want to see you so early in the morning? Why, of course. She'd be glad to see me any time. But before breakfast? On an empty stomach? Huh? Well, I'll only be a minute, my dear. I'll only be a minute. A 
That's funny. She must be here. Uh, here comes my beautiful angel. Hello, Leela. <laughs> hey. Truck Martin, what on earth are you doing here at this hour in the morning? I've got something for you. Guess what? Oh, this is no time for guessing games, Rockmorton. You woke me up. But, Leela, it's 7 o'clock and it's spring. Spring? Yes. Doesn't spring mean anything to you? Not at this hour in the morning. Please go home, Throckmorton. Oh, look what I brought you, Leela. The first crocus. <sighs> Isn't it pretty? Yes, it's very pretty. Yeah, let me put it in your hair. No, Throckmorton, and take your foot out of the door. Why, Leela... Just one little springtime good morning kiss? No, Throckmorton, you may not kiss me. What? No. In the first place, it's too early, and in the second place, you haven't shaved. Now, please take your foot from my door. But, Leela, after all, we're engaged to be married. Oh, we are, are we? Well, sir, I'm not even sure of that. Good morning. <laughs> women. <laughs> Yes, my dear, it's me. Come on in. We have company for breakfast. Uh, company? Oh, so it's you, Hooker. <laughs> it's, uh, old goat, what are you laughing at? <laughs> you look so darn silly with that crocus in your hand. <laughs> crocus? Oh, oh, yes, I just picked it out in the garden. That's funny. When I came past Leela Ransom's house a moment ago, I could have sworn that you were trying to give that crocus away. No, see here, Hooker. I didn't invite you here to breakfast. What are you doing hanging around this neighborhood anyhow at this hour of the morning? Well, I came to weed my victory garden. Oh, yeah. With that victory garden in the lot next door, I can see we'll get plenty of drop-in trade. Oh, have some breakfast, Uncle Morton. Maybe it'll cheer you up. I'll try it. Bertie. Yes, Mr. Gilsey. Morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, put this crocus in water, please, and then bring me two three-minute eggs, half a grapefruit, and plenty of toast and coffee. Yes, sir. Oh, Bertie. Yes, Judge? Seeing as how it's such a nice day, you can give Mr. Gildersleeve a few of those little sausages that I brought over here. Yes, sir. Y did you say sausages, Judge? That's right, Gildy. Well, now, that was mighty friendly of you, although I hate to admit it. Yep. I defended a farmer who makes his own sausage yesterday, and I took my whole fee out in trade. I wonder if I could get him to pay his water bill in potatoes. Goodness, here comes Superman. Who? Uh, Hi, sis. Hi, Uncle. Good morning, Judge. Hello, Leroy. Morning, Leroy. Leroy, stick in your shirt tail. Oh, it was okay when I started downstairs. Here's your orange juice, Mr. Gilsey. Thank you, Bertie. Oh, Leroy. Good morning, Bertie. Don't soft soap me. Was you in my cake box last night? Well, no, Bertie. Now, Leroy? No, honest, I wasn't. Oh, Leroy, nobody's going to hang you. Why don't you own up? Oh, because I never touched the darn case. Uh, wait a minute. What is all this? It's a case of the people versus Leroy, Throckmorton. The charge is larceny of a piece of cake. Oh, cake? Oh. Uh, Bertie, it's just possible I took a piece of cake last night. <laughs> you say it's possible, Mr. Gilsey? Yes. That's good enough for me. Case dismissed. Hang the jury in Habeas Corpus. <laughs> Bertie, you could very easily become a lawyer. Don't go putting ideas into her head, Judge. She's a good cook. Get those sausages, will you, Bertie? I can smell them from here, and they're ready. Yeah, Mr. Gilsey, you're right. Them sausages has reached their zero hour. Yeah. Then bring them on. A plate of sausages, a nice two-hour nap, and I'll be ready to go to the office. <laughs> Can't talk to me like that, you fresh boy, or I'll just hate you. Uh, uh, well, goodbye, honey. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Good morning, uh, good morning, uh... Uh, Bessie. Uh, thank you. Any mail I need to look at, Bessie? Well, most of it could wait till tomorrow. Oh, uh, that's good. And I took care of the rest. Oh, uh, good girl, Bessie. You're beginning to get the hang of the waterworks. Oh, thank you, sir. There was a letter from that new laundry on State Street, and I answered it. It's on your desk for you to sign. Oh, fine, Bessie. I'll clean up my day's work in no time. Yeah, now, let me see here. Oh, here it is. Parker Hand Laundry, Summerfield. Dear sirs, received your inquiry about special water rates for laundries. In reply, beg to inform you we have no special water. We sell only the regular kind. <laughs> your... That Bessie, I'm going to have to get rid of. Oh, Mr. Gildersee. What is it now, Bessie? There's someone here to see you. Oh, for heaven's sake, I can't see... Oh, hello, Leela. Hello, Throckmorton. <laughs> 
You may go, Bessie. <laughs> well, quite a surprise seeing you here. Uh, Throckmorton, I just had to come and see you for a minute. I'm afraid I was a little bit cross early this morning. You hurt my feelings, Leela. Well, I'm sorry, Throckmorton, but you have to understand that no woman likes to be seen early in the morning when she's not exactly at her best. Um, tell me, how do you like my new dress? Leela, what did you mean this morning when you said you weren't sure we were engaged? Well, I didn't mean it just the way it sounded, but sometimes I think you take me too much for granted. Well, I always thought if you're engaged, why, you're engaged, that's all. There you go, Throckmorton, <coughs> taking things for granted. But I... You think being engaged is just sitting around holding hands and kissing and such. You mean there's more to it? <laughs> Is. Our engagement should be a preparation for our life together. While we should be spending this time trying to develop some interests in common, things we like to do together. Well, I like to... No, I mean besides kissing. <laughs> I mean things we're both interested in, things we like to talk about, uh, worthwhile things like like world affairs and, and current events and all. Uh, Leela, when I'm with you, I can't think about worthwhile things. <laughs> <laughs> but you must try, dear. If we're going to be happy later, we must learn to be friends now. Well, I'm willing to try if you want to, friends. Uh, let's start now, then. How about a nice lunch with me at Dabney's Grill? We can get a booth. Oh, I can't possibly, Throckmorton. I'm having lunch with Marie King at the Woman's Exchange, and afterward we're going to the Red Cross. Oh, gracious, I'm late now. I must fly. But, Leela... Goodbye, Throckmorton. And you think about what I said now like a good boy. Goodbye. Good... Uh, women. If there were no such a thing as women, this world would be a lot better place. Yeah, but who'd want to live in it? I'm going to lunch. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. Meanwhile, let me suggest a really practical way to add extra nourishment and extra flavor to everyday meals. Dozens of ordinary dishes turn into very special treats when you add the delicious flavor of Pabstet, the nourishing cheese food of a hundred uses. For example, use Pabstet in making a macaroni casserole and see how good tasting this economical dish can be with that grand cheddar cheese flavor baked in. Or melt Pabstet into a smooth cheese sauce and see how it transforms leftovers of meat or fish into exciting main dishes for the next meal and makes even the plainest of vegetables wonderfully appetizing. Pabstet slices perfectly, too. With fruit or pie or just by itself, it tops off wartime meals with a grand touch of cheese goodness. Yes, for real flavor and for some of the vitamins and minerals your family needs, ask your dealer for Pabstet. He may not always have it on hand because so much of the nation's dairy foods are going to war that supplies sometimes run low. But watch for economical Pabstet. Buy it when you can. Pabstet, the delicious cheese food of a hundred uses. Well, time mooches on. Two hours have passed while Gildersleeve, alone in Dabney's Grill, lingered over lunch, glaring at the women around him and muttering into his salad. And now, reluctant to get back to work, he's thought up an excuse to go out to the reservoir and confer with the superintendent. I hardly need to tell you that on a spring day, there isn't a pleasanter place in Summerfield than the reservoir. Uh, cooler here. Charlie! Uh, Uncle Charlie! Uh, might be in the pumping station. Charlie! Charlie Anderson. Yeah, not here. Well, it's a nice day. I'll just lie down here in the shade till he turns up. <laughs> uh, spring. Spring, spring, you lovely thing. Bees and birds are on the wing. Listen to the way they sing. Ting-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling -a -ling. <laughs> 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 uh, not bad. <laughs> no, Mr. Gildersleeve, that's pretty good. Yeah. PB, where did you come from? I didn't hear you. Well, I learned to walk Indian fashion as a boy. <laughs> See, one foot in front of the other. Uh, huh? If I had moccasins on, you couldn't hear me at all. 
What are you doing out here, Peavy? <laughs> you know, Steve, I could ask you the same question. Me? I'm out here on business. Oh, I see. Yes, I'm uh, waiting for the superintendent here, Charlie Anderson. Well, in that case, I'll sit down and help you wait. Who's tending the drugstore while you're out here, Peavy? <laughs> Mrs. Peavy. Yeah. But it's all right. I've been picking her some wildflowers, see? Trailing our beauties. It's like poison ivy to me. Yeah, and you don't know trailing our beauties. Maybe you don't know poison ivy. Well, I always carry a bottle of calamine lotion with me just to be on the safe side. Yeah, you'd better. Uh, care for some? No, thanks. Uh, Peavy, uh, speaking of poison ivy, have you ever had much to do with women? <laughs> well, in a manner of speaking, I'm married to one. <laughs> then tell me, Peavy... What does a woman mean when she says you've been taking her too much for granted? <laughs> I haven't heard that in 15 years. Well, what does it mean? Well, it usually means that she's been reading a book. Oh. I'll never forget the year that Mrs. Peavy subscribed to the lady's home companion. No peace that year. Well, what'd you do? I let the subscription run out. Hey, you! What you think you're doing there? Don't you know this is city property? Oh, Charlie Anderson. Wait a minute, Charlie. Don't get out of there. Get off the property, dead busted. Whoa, there. Hold your horses, Uncle Charlie. Put on your glasses. It's me, Gildersleeve. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, well, by jiggers, it's about time. I called you up. We got to do something here. People coming out here all over the place, breaking bottles, scattering papers, like a dead busted picnic ground. Oh, but uh, Charlie, you know Mr. Peavy, don't you? Of course I know him. What do you think? Know him as well as I know you. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Folks come out here at night, too, and park in the dead, busted automobiles. Come out here to spoon. <laughs> what are we running here? A waterworks or a dead, busted petting parlor? <laughs> well, Charlie, you have to remember... Holy Toledo. Yes. You have to remember this is public property, and after all, boys will be boys. Well, they don't mind the boys, it's the women. They come out here in their slacks and, uh... And, uh, they're worse than the men. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Come out here and... Uh, what'd you say? He said he wouldn't say that. Well, what would he say? You'll have to ask him. Would you care to enlarge on that thought, P.V.? Well, my experience with the fair sex has been that they take a little understanding. I'll say... Now, Mr. Gildersleeve here has a problem. He... I don't know what your problem is, Commissioner, but I'll tell you the answer... Have nothing to do with women, Dad. Bust them. Especially this time of the year. Charlie, I'm inclined to think you're right. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Don't be quiet. <laughs> Pete, Snake, what do you know about women anyway? Well, I've got one of them waiting at home for me right now. Can either of you gentlemen say the same? Uh, well, Peavy's been a bad boy today. He, he's he been playing a little hooky. Well, no, I wouldn't say... Dad, bust it! There he goes again! Uh, no offense, Mr. Anderson. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, if I might offer a suggestion. Yes, Peavy? Have you tried taking your lady friend a posy? They're usually well received. I took her a posy. That's what started all the trouble. What did? What did you take her? A dad busted crocus. <laughs> Gildersleeve, is it all right if I clear away the dishes now? Yes, we're finished, Bertie. And that was a fine dinner. Well, it should have been, Mr. Gildersleeve. It was pretty expensive. Oh, really, Bertie? What did it cost? Eighteen red points, sixteen blue points, two dollars in cash, and a coffee stamp. <laughs> well, uh, Leroy, go get me a cigar, will you, in the den. Okay, I'll... And stick your shirt tail in. Is that out again? Well, Marjorie, I suppose Ben will be coming over this evening. Well, how did you guess? Are we going over to Mrs. Ransom's? Well, I don't know, my dear. I'm not sure I want to. Why, what's wrong? Oh, nothing, really. I told you this morning not to go rushing over there at the crack of dawn. Well, she wants me to talk about foreign affairs or something. I don't know what she wants. Worthwhile conversation and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, why don't you do it? Me talk about foreign affairs? Well, you wouldn't have to talk about them very long. Huh? I don't understand. You will. You just try it. Uh, Take a cigar, Uncle. I bit the end off for you. Oh, well, perhaps you'll be good enough to smoke it for me. Yeah, sure. You got a light? Yep. <laughs> I'm fooling. Give it to me. Pam, have you got a minute? What do you mean, have I got a minute? Well, I'd like to discuss something with you. All right, my boy. Let's discuss it. Privately, I'd like to discuss it with you alone. What's this all about? I don't know. Uh, will you excuse us, my dear? 
Just step into the den here, Leroy. Thanks, Uncle. Now, uh, what's on your mind, young man? Um, uh, could I have 53 cents to go to the movies? I thought movies cost 35 cents. Well, well you see, I'm going with Piggy. Uh, we're each going to buy our own tickets. That's 35. Yes. And then we're each going to pay for half of the other ticket. What other ticket? Well, we have to have another ticket. Why? Well, we're taking somebody. Who? Who are you taking who can't pay for his own ticket? Well, we're taking a girl. A girl, huh? Yeah, Janie Owen. You too, Leroy. (laughs) Well, I suppose it was bound to come. Here, here's a dollar. Maybe she likes sodas. Ah, thanks, Oh, Gee, you're swell. Um, Uncle... One more thing. Now what? Don't say anything about this to Marge. Marge? Why not? Because I'd just die if she found out, Unc. Honest, I'd just die. (laughs) All right, my boy. I won't say anything to your sister. Thanks. Well, I gotta go. Uh, Leroy. I know. Stick my shirt tail in. Hiya, Ben. What did you blow in? So long, Marge. Come on, buddy. Well, he was in a hurry. Evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, hello, Ben. Uh, won't you take the sofa? Oh, no. Sit still, you two. Sit still. I can sit over here if I want to. Uh, well, um, we were going out anyway, weren't we, Ben? Huh? Oh, sure. Anything you say, Marge. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we thought maybe we'd go to the movies or something. Yeah, we just thought we'd go to the movies. <laughs> Now, now, don't let me drive you out of here. I'll go into my den or someplace. Oh, now, we don't want you to do that, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ben. Stick around. We weren't going to do anything. (laughs) Well, I may go out. I haven't decided. Uh, Don't let me get in your way. Oh, you wouldn't. Uh, Ben, let Uncle Mark do what he wants. If he wants to go in his den, let him go in his den. If he wants to go out, let him go out. Uh, All right, my dear, I'll go. I know you young people want to be together. Oh, honest, Mr. Gildersleeve. Ben! <laughs> yes, I, I think Ben wants to be alone. <laughs> I'll go and look into the international situation next door. Hello, Leela. Oh, hello, Throckmorton. I was hoping you might come over. You were? Yes. Uh, Come into the parlor, won't you? Uh, all right. What do you think I did after I got through with the Red Cross this afternoon? What? I took a walk out south of town. Uh, You know that big tall hill just before you get to the Mansfield Road? Well, I climbed up there all by myself. And I lay there in the grass and just let the spring breeze blow through my hair. I could just feel spring all over me. Leela, the Allied forces in North Africa made definite progress today. Yes. Uh, you know what I think? What, Throckmorton? Well, this is just my personal analysis, of course. But after the Allies take Africa, I wouldn't be surprised if they'd use it as a base to attack Europe. Uh, Throckmorton, you're so clever when you want to be. Now, I just would never think of anything like that. But, of course, you men are all so military. Uh, yeah. Leela, I'm thinking of joining the Book of the Month Club. I imagine it'll be very worthwhile. Oh, I'm sure it will. All my cousins used to belong back home, and they just loved it. I used to wish I had the time to read all those books. They come pretty often, you know. Every month. Mm. Uh, sit down here beside me, honey. All right. Uh, uh, did you hear the symphony concert on the radio this evening? Oh, uh, I missed it. What did they play? Uh, something by Beethoven. You know, Ludwig Beethoven, the well-known composer. Oh, yes. I just adore all his symphonies, especially the Moonlight Sonata. I thought that was a piano piece. Oh. Well, uh, it's been arranged for the piano. Um, Would you like me to play it for you? Oh, you know I love to hear you play, Leela. Uh, Strange I should think of the Moonlight Sonata when there's such a lovely moon outside, isn't it? Yeah, huh? 
Yeah. Uh, you're sure you want me to play? Oh, please, please play. Yeah. Yeah. Beethoven was certainly a fine composer. Mm, wasn't he, though? Very classical. Uh, what does Moonlight make you think of, Throckmorton? <laughs> Lots of things. Uh, Throckmorton, do you like this song? Uh, oh, it, Moonlight becomes you. Mm. I just love it when Bing Crosby sings this. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Bing Crosby, huh? Moonlight becomes you. It goes with your hair. You certainly know the right thing to wear. <laughs> Moonlight becomes you I'm thrilled at the sight And I could get so romantic tonight <laughs> You're all dressed up to go dreaming Now don't tell me I'm wrong And what a night to go dreaming Mind if I tag along If I say I love you I want you to know It's not just because there's moonlight Although Moonlight becomes you so Leela? Uh, what is it, Throckmorton? Leela, uh, come out into the garden. What for, Throckmorton? I want to tell you about the rummel plan. Did you and Piggy have a good time at the movies with your girl? No, not very. What's the matter? Wasn't the picture any good? Nah, just a lot of mushy stuff. Besides, after two hours, I found I'd been holding hands with Piggy. Yeah. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Music on this program was under the direction of Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. These days, the old saying, a penny saved is a penny earned, has a running mate. A point saved is a point earned. Stretching ration stamps has become just as important as saving dollars. And one of the best ways you homemakers can do both is to buy quality foods like parquet margarine that are good tasting and nutritious and tops for many uses. Parquet margarine has a delicious, satisfying flavor that makes it just about perfect as a spread for bread. It's a wonderful seasoning for hot vegetables. And when it comes to baking, you can depend on parquet because it is a real flavor shortening. You like it for pan frying, too. It doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. Every economical package of parquet margarine helps supply the energy and vitamins your family needs. It's one of the best energy foods you can serve, and every pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. Now, if you can't buy parquet the first time you try, it's because of wartime shortages. But Kraft is doing everything possible to keep dealers supplied and should be able to get it soon. Ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine made by Kraft. This program reached you from Hollywood.